We owe a special thanks to all of these people who are spreading lies about Islam. This Islamophobia propaganda actually gets people interested to know the truth. And when they finally know the truth, we see thousands of reverts every day. So thanks, Islamophobes. This time we're addressing some of their claims. Like, for example, Muslims are worshipping the devil. Or Islam is a separate religion, new religion that came 600 years after Jesus. Muslims reject Jesus. We're gonna define what Islam is. First, we need to look at the word Islam itself, because the word Islam itself is an Arabic word that needs to be translated so we can understand it. And by the way, Islam is not a name of a person or a city or a religion. Islam is a word that describes a behavior. The behavior of believing in God and submitting our will to him. Is it related to the Arabs? No, it's not. Is it related to Muhammad? No, it's not. Muslims are not called Muhammadians like Christians. Muslims are not the followers of Muhammad only. Muslims worship God and follow all of his prophets. Muslims are not called Muhammadists like Buddhists. Muslims are not called Arabs like Jews are named after a family name. Islam literally means believing in God and submitting our will to him so we become less free and more righteous. For example, God gave us a rule. Adultery is forbidden. So can we as a Muslim democracy vote to make adultery okay? No, we can't. Because God did not give us the freedom to make this decision. However, we can vote on speeding limits on roads. Should we make it 100 km per hour or should we make it 120? Yeah, we have freedom here because God didn't order us to follow a specific speed limit. However, when it comes to adultery or usury or cheating or stealing, we can't vote to make it legal. And that applies to other things too that some secular Western countries now are trying or already made legal. I think this verse in the Quran summarizes the meaning of Islam in a very, very nice way. It says here, Inna Allah hashtara min al-mu'minina anfusahum wa amwalahum bi'anna lahum al-jannah. Which means that God made a deal with the believers. He purchased from them themselves and their wealth. In exchange, they get eternal happiness in heaven or paradise. If you're not slave to God and become righteous, you will be slave to your desires and you will just follow your desires, which is described in the Quran as He made his desires into his own God. If you want an in-depth definition of what the word Islam means, let's listen to this very nice explanation from our brother Yusuf Estes. The only thing Allah wants from you is this simple thing, your heart. That's what he wants. Give him your heart and everything else will be fine. And how you do that? I'm gonna give you five words in the English language. They have to be all at the same time. Surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, and peace. Do you want those things in your life? Yes, sir. I do too. Everybody in this room wants those things. All at the same time though. Surrender, submission, obedience to his commandments. You know the Ten Commandments. We got the same thing. It's the same thing. It's not a new religion. And then sincerity. To be sincere. No lies. No showing off. No riyadh. For Allah only. And finally, to be in peace with whatever he gives you. Say, okay, thank you. Even if you like it, thank you. If you don't like it, thank you. Anyway, because it's from him. Be in peace with it. This word in Arabic is one. It takes five words in English. You know what the word is in Arabic? No. Islam. Islam. Really? That's the word.
So did the religion of Islam start 600 years after Jesus? Was the religion of Islam invented by Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him? Here we say the answer is absolutely not. Islam is the religion of God, is the religion of all prophets, starting with Adam, peace be upon him, until the last prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We discussed this part before in our series, Did You Read the Bible? I will put a link to it in the description. Anyway, let's check this part out first and then continue our conversation. Muslim worship God and believe and follow all of his prophets, not one of them. Muslims celebrate Abraham every year in Adha festival. Muslims celebrate Moses' exodus every year in Ashura festival. Abraham is mentioned in the Quran 69 times. Moses is mentioned in the Quran 136 times. Jesus is mentioned in the Quran 25 times. Muhammad is mentioned in the Quran only 5 times. Muslims are not the followers of Muhammad. Muslims believe in and follow all prophets. Noah is mentioned in the Quran 43 times, John 5 times, Jacob 16 times, Joseph 23 times, Lut 27 times, Ishmael 12 times, Adam 25 times, Aaron 20 times, Solomon 17 times, Ishaq 17 times, David 16 times, Shuaib 11 times, Saleh 9 times, Zachariah 7 times, Hud 7 times and more. I think it's clear now that Muslims are not only the followers of Muhammad, Muslims obey and follow God and all of his prophets, all of his prophets, not only one. And to give further proof, uh, let's check this verse from the Quran, chapter 2, 136. Believers, you should say, we believe in Allah and what had been revealed to us through Prophet Muhammad, of course, and what had been revealed before us to Ibrahim, to Ismail, to Ishaq, to Yaqub, and his descendants. Of course, English names would be Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the descendants. And what was given to Moses and Jesus and what was given to the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them, and we are Muslims to him. So if a Muslim says, I believe in Prophet Muhammad, but I don't believe in Jesus, he is not a Muslim anymore. He is literally an, a disbeliever to us. If a Muslim says, I believe in Muhammad, peace be upon him, Jesus, peace be upon him, but not Moses, he is not a Muslim anymore. He is a disbeliever to us. To be a Muslim is to believe in God and all of his messengers and to not make any distinction between the messengers. Let's read more verses to understand the perspective of Muslims towards other prophets. For example, Quran chapter 2, verse 128. Lord, make us Muslims to you and from our descendants. This is Ibrahim and Ishmael. Chapter 3, verse 67. Ibrahim or Abraham, he was neither a Jew or a Christian. He was before all that. A Jew is a descendant of Judah, the son of Jacob. That is long after Ibrahim. And there was no Torah and there was no Injil or Gospels. There was no Jesus. So what was the religion of Ibrahim? So tell them Ibrahim was not a Jew or a Christian. He was Hanifan Musliman. So he was Hanifan, he was a monotheist and Musliman. He submitted his will to God. Ibrahim was a Muslim. Another example, Quran chapter 2, verse 132 and 33. Abraham and Jacob, both of them instructed their sons that Allah chose the religion for you so don't die except if you are Muslim. Or were you witnesses? When death approached Jacob and he said to his sons, what will you worship after me? They said, we will worship your God and the God of your fathers, Abraham, Ishmael, and Isaac. One God and we are Muslims. Then we have Joseph, Prophet Joseph, peace be upon him, in chapter 12, verse 101. Here Joseph is asking Allah to die as a Muslim and to go meet the righteous people in heaven. Chapter 10, verse 84, Moses said to his people, if you are believers in Allah, then rely on him if you are Muslims. Chapter 27, verse 31, this is Prophet David, peace be upon him. 
ألا تعلو علي وأتوني مسلمين Don't be arrogant and come to me as Muslims Also the same chapter verse 38 Which of you will bring me her throne before they come to me as Muslims And of course Jesus chapter 3 verse 52 When Jesus felt the disbelief in them He said who are my supporters in the cause of Allah The disciples said we are the supporters of Allah we believe in Allah and we testify that we are Muslims. Chapter 5, verse 111. When I inspired to the disciples, believe in me and my messenger, i.e. Jesus. They said, we have believed, so bear witness that indeed we are Muslims. Islam is the religion of Muhammad and Jesus and Moses and David and Abraham and Noah and Adam. And if you look closely, you will find Islam all over history. Let's take the Bible, for example. In order to be considered a Muslim, you should do two things. First of all, you should believe in one God. And here in Mark 12, 29, Jesus answered, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And number two, you should submit your will to the will of God. So in Matthew 26, 39, Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me, not yet as I will, but as you will. This is Jesus submitting his will to God. And, of course, praying to God. Alhamdulillah, he was praying to God. He was not praying to himself or the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, I will have to call him Christian. But because he's only praying to God and submitting his will to him, now I can call him Muslim. So, regarding prayers, if we're going to talk about prayers, let's talk about all the prayers of the prophets. Let's start with Abraham. How did Abraham pray? In Genesis 17.3, at this, Abraham fell face down on the ground, then God talked with him. Numbers 20, verse 6. Then Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the entrance of the tent of meeting and fell on their faces. Seems like it's not a coincidence. Seems like this is the way to pray to God. Okay. How about the people of Israel in general? 2 Chronicles 7.3 When all the people of Israel saw the fire come down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed down with their faces to the ground on the pavement and gave thanks to the Lord. Okay, so it wasn't only the prophets and also their followers were doing the same. Because I only see Muslims doing that now. Nahmiya 8 6. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Oh, so Ezra too was a Muslim. Okay. Judges 13 20. When Manuch and his wife saw this, they fell on their faces to the ground. Okay, also Manuch. Ezekiel 9.8 I was left alone and I fell on my face and cried out and said, O Lord God. 1 Samuel 20.41 David got up from the south side of the stone and bowed down before Jonathan three times with his face to the ground. So why was David doing that? So why was David praying like Muslims? Why, why didn't he make a cross and pray to Mother Mary. Joshua 5.14 And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship. Okay. How about that? Let's go to the New Testament. We just read this verse. Let's read it again. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed. So how did Jesus pray? Face to the ground. This is what we call sujud. And this is how Muslims, like Jesus, prayed and are still praying until now. Then you have the disciples. Matthew 17, 6. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground. This is Jesus and his disciples. Last but not least, how about angels? Revelation 7, 11. All the angels were standing around the throne. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God. So this is even how angels pray. All the prophets in the Bible, all the New Testament, prayed the same way, the Muslim way.
You are so arrogant that you invented a new prayer that Jesus didn't do and then accuse Muslims that they are rejecting Jesus while Muslims are literally the only people on earth who are doing like Jesus. Not right. Do you know how Muslims are the only group of people who are really following the prophets? Check out the Sharia law that you're afraid of. Hijab, right? The Muslim hijab. 1 Timothy 2, 9 and 10. I also want the women to dress modestly, with decency and propriety, adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, but with good deeds, appropriate for women who profess to worship God. 1 Corinthians 11.6 But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. It is the same as having her head shaved. For if a woman does not cover her head, she might as well have her hair cut off. That's very harsh. We don't do that in Islam. But if it's a disgrace for a woman to have her hair cut off or her head shaved, then she should cover her head. That's not Quran. That's the Bible. How about fasting? Matthew 4.2 After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Acts 14.23 Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord. How about pork? Muslims don't eat pork for some reason. Do you know why? Because in Deuteronomy 14.8, the pig is also unclean. Although it has a divided hoof, it does not chew the cud. You're not to eat their meat or touch their carcasses. Muslims don't get drunk. Do you know why? Because in Galatians 5, verse 19, the acts of sinful nature are obvious, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And Muslims want to inherit the kingdom of heaven, so they obey the teachings of the Bible and they don't drink alcohol. And of course, they don't drink alcohol in the place of worship. Muslims condemn usury. Do you know why? Because in Ezekiel 18.13, lends that interest and takes profit. Shall he then live? He shall not live. He has done all of these abominations. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. Muslims also forbid adultery. They stay away from adultery. So no boyfriend, girlfriend, no prostitution, no porn, no all of this television scenes. No, all of this TikTok thirst raps, all of this stuff will stay away from it. Do you know why? Because in Matthew 15, 19, for out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. Also in Matthew 5, 28, 29, but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. This is why Muslims don't commit adultery. Muslims also condemn homosexuality and they get attacked every day because of that. But you know what? It's not our opinion. We submit our will to God. And God said in Leviticus 20, 13, if a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them committed an abomination, they shall surely be put to death. It's not Quran. It is in the Bible. Their blood is upon them. I ask you, do you keep the laws and the commandments? You say no. I say, why not? He says, the law is nailed to the cross. Why not? He says, we are living in the grace. That's what the Christian says. You're living in the grace. I say, where did you get this? This idea that the law is nailed to the cross is done away with. Where did you get it? So he quotes me. Philippians, Galatians, Corinthians, Thessalonians, Colossians, and... So who's this? Who's this? Timothy, Romans, who's all this? What's this? Who is that? It's a Paul, 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 Paul. I said, who is your master? You say, Jesus. What does he say? You're contradicting Jesus. And Jesus said, the disciple is not greater than the master. Master is Jesus. What he tells you, I say, I listen to my master, Jesus. He never had the pig. He, none of his disciples ever touched that pork. You call it pork, ham, bacon, whatever you call it. He never touched that stuff. None of his disciples ever touched it. And you are all pig eaters. Christians. 
We didn't get this. He said, Peter had a dream. On that dream, now you eat pigs. When my master never ate it, he wouldn't eat it. It was abhorrent to him. He killed 2,000 pigs, one hit. He destroyed them all. You know that? But now you don't listen to him. You are now living in the grace. I said, are you circumcised? He says, no. I said, why aren't you? It's a major commandment. God gave. Your Lord was Christ. Jesus Christ was circumcised. I said, what is good for your God should be good for you. No, you won't circumcise. Why won't you? This is the law of God. It entered into between Abraham and his descendants forever. And you claim to be spiritual descendants. How does that absolve you? It is Jesus was circumcised and you are not. He said, no. This is Paul said, circumcision is nothing and non-circumcision is nothing. I said, Jesus says, not even one jot or one tittle is to pass from the law. Can't you see? You are not following Jesus. You are following Paul. 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 He is the real founder of Christianity. Paul. Not Jesus. And finally, the claims that Muslims worship the Kaaba. We don't worship the Kaaba. We worship God. The Kaaba is a masjid, is a place of worship to God. Like church is a place of worship. Masjid is a place of worship or mosque. Kaaba is a mosque. So it is a place of worship. And it is the direction of the prayer. So some people direct their prayer towards Jerusalem. Some people direct their prayer towards the east. And some people direct their worship towards Kaaba. Moses himself made the same pilgrimage to the same Kaaba we are doing now. So we are doing like Moses. Do you know who admits that? Actually, the haters of Islam admit that Moses did pilgrimage to the Kaaba in Mecca. Check this out. Avi Lipkin is here from Israel, and he's brought his brand new book. It's called Return to Mecca. And the title of this book, Return to Mecca, what, what could that possibly mean? And, and on the cover is a picture of a black cube. That's where the story starts. Avi, let's, let's start right there. Uh, I believe that the Bible uh, took place, a lot of it took place in Arabia. Actually, in most churches, Christians say to me, we know that Mount Sinai, the real Mount Sinai, is not in the Sinai Peninsula, but rather in northwest Saudi Arabia. It's called Jebel al uh, Jethro, the high priest of Midian, I believe was the high priest of the Kaaba, the black stone, which is today in Mecca. There was no Mecca. It was just a black stone in those days. Our father's Jethro. He's sheik of Midian. Uh, Moses was the son-in-law of Jethro. Moses was the understudy of Jethro for 40 years. And when Moses went to take the children of Israel out of slavery, he gave them the phylacteries, which they are to put on their forehead and on their left arm. Uh, Moses, Aaron, Jethro were at the Kaaba, which is today Mecca. And when God says in Deuteronomy 11 that the borders of Israel will include the desert to the south, that desert is Arabia. So Moses, when he had to flee Egypt after he killed the, the taskmaster who was beating the Jewish slave, the Israelite slave, he knew where he was going. He knew the geography. He was almost Pharaoh. So he had to know the geography. So he took the Israelites through the desert to what is today Nueva, on the eastern shore of the Red Sea of uh, uh, Sinai. That is where they crossed. And there's, by the way, there's no archaeological proof at all of an exodus in the Sinai Peninsula. The, but there is tons of archaeological proof in the Arabian Peninsula, the New Testament, uh, chapter 4, verse 25 of Galatians. It says, you know, that Mount Sinai and Hagar, which are in Arabia. You see the Orthodox Jewish men go to the back of the plane and they pray, and they put on the phylacteries. And this is a tradition that goes back 3,500 years. Matthew 23, verse 5. Jesus is criticizing the Pharisees, and he says, For all their, their works they do to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries, and they enlarge the hems of their garments, or the tzitzit on their prayer shawls. And it's, it's interesting indeed that today there are three types of phylactery. You have the size A, the size B, and the size C. And so okay. what Jesus was saying was, he wasn't saying don't put on the phylacteries, which I'm sure Jesus did. Uh, what he was saying was that if you have the $200 phylactery and you have the $400 phylactery, and you have the $600 phylactery, which is humongous, don't spend your money on $600 phylactery. Spend it on the $200 and give the $400 to charity to feed the poor. So, but it's something, it's in Matthew 23, verse 5. So we know that Jewish men in those days wore this. We know that in the Greek Orthodox Christian tradition, there are priests who put on phylacteries. It's a slightly different Greek phylactery, but it all commemorates exactly the same thing. So the phylacteries have a very important meaning for Christians as well. So my question, and I'll ask it for everybody who's watching, why in the world would you put on, uh, strap a little wooden box with scriptures from Deuteronomy on the inside 
and attach that to your left arm and to your forehead. Why would, why would you do that, and why would it be cube-shaped? Cube Perfectly cube-shaped. Moses is leading the children of Israel out of the pyramid triangular system to the cubic square system of freedom in the desert. And again, uh, Moses says to Pharaoh, let my people go so that they may circle me in the desert. The other five times, let my people go so that they may serve the Lord in the desert. But the first one is they should go around in circles. Now, Hajj is a pilgrim to Mecca. Hag is the Egyptian pronunciation. Hag in Hebrew means a holiday or going around in circles. Hag in Hebrew means a holiday or going around in circles or going around in circles. And by the way, my people, forgive me for being arrogant, are the Jews and the Christians together. Uh, if the, now, my, my contention through my book is, if we Judeo-Christians get Mecca and Medina, then we capture the flag, and it is the termination of Allah, who I say is Satan, and sending the devil to the pits of hell for a thousand years. So, to sum up, chapter 3, verse 19, inna al al Islam. The religion in the sight of God is Islam. It is the only religion. So, every time Islam evolves to be something else, God sends another prophet. So now you understand why was Prophet Muhammad sent 600 years after Jesus? Because Islam of Jesus already evolved into Pauline Christianity, Trinitarians, polytheists. This is why God needed to send another prophet, one of his more than 100,000 prophets that he sent throughout history. This was the last one to clarify that polytheism, Trinitarianism, Paulinism is not Islam. And we should revert back to the religion of Jesus, the religion of David, the religion of Noah, the religion of Adam, Islam. Muslim brothers and sisters, as you already know, Adal Al Khairi Kafaali. So support our Dawah project by engaging more with the video, so it will get suggested to more people, so we can deliver the message of God to the world. And if you want to support financially, we will leave the donation links below. Thanks and salam alaikum.